Which brings me into our first um, guest that we're gonna recognize. A young man that I met back in the seventh grade. I was in a, actually I think sixth grade, and I was with um, a lady by the name of Kim Richardson, and she had a son by the name of Cody. And so I was talking to Cody, and I was going to see Cody play. Where's Cody? I think he's here somewhere. There he goes, my man Cody over there. And so I was like, okay, let me come and see him play and see what he got. So I went to watch him play. And then I seen this other dude that was like, wow, you know? So I'm watching him, and then I found out that they, them two were best friends. And then I found out that Miss Kim was helping really the whole situation with everybody. So upon meeting this gentleman, when I first started coaching him, I used to say to him, and this was in the seventh grade, I used to say, you're a professional athlete. Like, you're a pro athlete right now. If you continue to work, and if a little bit of luck happens, then you've got a chance. And one thing that I can say about him is that he's persevered. It wasn't easy. He didn't take the traditional road of going to a college, being recruited um, uh, for the NFL, or even really being highly recruited out of high school. And like some of my guys, I get on you all now about grades and your opportunities and really taking advantage of it. So this young man was kind of really finding his way. But I knew he was a professional athlete. Like I knew it, there, it was no question. Um, so after graduating at J-Town High School, playing basketball and football, he got a chance to go play at a junior college. Played at the junior college, played there a year, then decided he wanted to take his talents to a professional league. So he went and played professional for a couple years, then got a call up by the Kansas City Chiefs was on the practice squad for the Kansas City Chiefs, and then he got a call up and he went to the Houston Texans. And this whole time, I'm watching just from a distance, and I'm like, man, I can't believe this is Daniel. That's Daniel doing that. So I'm looking, so I'm just following the journey. Then, all of a sudden, he signs with the Dallas Cowboys. Oh. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. This is my guy by a team that I love, and he plays for him. Like, it was surreal for me. I can only imagine what it was for him coming up through what it was that he came up through. So, he went and played last year for the Cowboys, played this year for the Cowboys. Unbelievable player, number 93. I used to call, I would text Cody and say, hey man, you see Daniel? And Cody would be like, yeah, he's doing good right now, ain't he? You know, and, and, and just one thing I wanted to share, like it was right before every, like before they did the cuts, and I was like, I called Cody, and I was like, man, is he gonna be okay? He was like, coach, he's gonna be straight. He's good, coach, he's good. And so without further introduction, a, a young man that I love, that I've been blessed enough to watch, that I appreciate, that I know what his hustle was, I know it wasn't easy, I know it was about perseverance, I know it was about his belief, I know it was about his granny, that his granny, his mama, Miss Kim, he had a village of people, clap it up for him, clap it up for him. He had a village of people. He had a village of people, and as you can see here at the tables, he had a village of people that followed him and that believed in him. And more importantly, he believed in himself. So without further ado, I am honored, I am honored, I am beyond honored to sit here and introduce you all to the Dallas Cowboy. Look how big he is. Hey, you know, he was almost this size in seventh grade. He was bigger than me. You know, so without further ado, I'm honored to introduce to you all Mr. Daniel Ross. Consistency. You can definitely fulfill your dreams. 
you can conquer any obstacle that anybody throws your way. Because trust me, my road was not easy. <laughs> it was it, it was not easy. Uh, in high school, uh, trust me, I, I used to play basketball. You know, that's where my first love was. But anybody that didn't know, I was number two in the state. You know, four guard, accent, you know, all four years. You know, and then uh, my all my teammates, uh, all my my friends, they kept telling me, man, you need to go out and play football. But I wasn't focused on football, man. I was trying to be the next LeBron James. <laughs> you know, uh, but football was my call. So I went out freshman year, but it was too late. Uh, I missed tryouts. Uh, so coach told me to come back next year. So I came back next year. And uh, my sophomore year, that's when my football dreams had started. Uh, I didn't know how to get into a stance. I didn't know how to read plays. I didn't know the concept of what they wanted me to do. But I tell you what, they told me to do one thing, and that's run through the man right in front of you and make any play that you can. So that's what I did. Then uh, I played my first my first game. This is when I really fell in love with football. My first actual football game. Uh, in, in, it, was, it was just crazy. It was, a, it was a feeling that I'll never forget. Uh, I was on the kickoff team. <clears throat> so uh, <laughs> I was on the kickoff team, right? And um, I'm running full speed. Back then, I, I could run a full four flat. Period. <laughs> that, that's back then. Right now, I can run a 4 Any Anybody want to put money down, I'll race you right now. Anybody. Anybody. I see a couple hands. Don't worry. Don't worry. Let me take the shoot off. But uh, I, ran, I ran down the field as fast as I can. And you know, it just came over me. You know, back, back in the day, me and my friends, we used to play pitch back tackle, smear the queer, all that. So it just it just came back to me. I seen the person with the ball. <laughs> seen the person with it. See the ball. He had the ball. I seen him. Running full speed to him. Bye! Falls down. That feeling was just just amazing to me. How long was he down for though? He was about he was down for about 30 minutes. <laughs> it was a delay again. And from that moment on, football was my call. And I never looked back. So from high school, I went to Northeast Mississippi. And I played two semesters there. And in those semesters, I, I built myself up to be this amazing prospect. Uh, I could have went anywhere. I had offers and looks from all over this United States. Uh, but my grades went there. So you guys that are struggling in class, my grades went there. So you guys that are struggling in class, really take advantage of every teacher, every tutor that you have, because they are there to help you. They're not there to look down on you or anything. They're there to help you. I didn't take advantage of that. So I had to take another route. So I finished my two years at Northeast, and then I took my talents up to the Canadian Football League. <clears throat> and there, that's when I was 20 years old. I signed my first contract when I was, actually, I signed my first contract when I was 19. Professional. That's when I became a professional football player. When I was 19 years old. I didn't, I, in a whole nother country, I had to leave my mom, my friends, my kids. It was hard. But at the end of the day, I had a job to do, which is feed my family. You feel me? Uh, so I had to make that sacrifice. Time spent with them, missed. You know, is <clears throat> not about to get off this. We we gonna talk about that another day, you know. But uh, 
other than that, that time in Canada, it grew me up. Point blank period. I had to go through things. I had to endure things. I had to pull myself up out of a hole that I that I dug for myself. And you know, I met somebody there, my wife. She's my wife now. And she has been a big part of my life. Because little do you guys know, like I said, Canada was not easy. I struggled there. I was on the practice roster and I was making $750 a week. <laughs> practice roster in the NFL, <laughs> $7,000. Five hundred a week. Big difference. Big, big difference. But I was seeing not even half of that, you know, because I was trying to send money home to make sure that my son was okay. To see, <clears throat> to make sure that he was fed at any. <clears throat> By any means necessary. I have to do what I have to do. Through that, I had, it was a big struggle. I was on the practice roster. I couldn't make, the, the, the best thing was about playing in the CFL was they paid for your, they paid for your living if you was on the practice roster. So, you know, I was lucky. I was lucky, you know, they paid for my housing. They didn't pay for my food. I had to go venture off to go find that, you know. And then um, throughout, I went up there in 2014. Throughout that whole year, I was on that practice roster of the Edmonton Eskimos. Uh, at the end of the year, 2014, I got cut. Worst feeling that I've ever felt in my life. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to take it. I was just asking myself, what happened? But you can't do that. You gotta dust off that shoulder. Dust that dirt off, get back up, and go capture that dream. Because at the end of the day, this is what this is what we do. This is what I do. Point blank, period. And I be, and I, I don't want to cuss, so excuse my language. If I if I do slip, uh, I would never let another man define who I am. Period. And that's just who I am. Which means, if you run up in front of me, you, I'm going to give you everything and anything that you didn't want. Everything bad that you're thinking in your mind, I'm going to bring to the table. Period. I'm trying to make you rethink your life decisions when you're on that field with me. And I took that mindset from the Edmonton Eskimos. I got cut. I sat out that whole year, not playing the football, not taking a snack, not reading the playbook, nothing. I was working at Champs. I was trying to find jobs like landscaping. I was even trying to be an electrician, and I don't even know nothing about that. But anything that was going to put money in my pocket, and keep me afloat, I was gonna do. So, okay, year passed. <laughs> got, I got a call from Saskatchewan Rough Riders, still in the CFL. And um, that was the worst, that was basically the worst time in my adult life. Uh, I was struggling, uh, I wasn't playing, I wasn't even on the team. But they had me there living. And um, I was just, it was basically called the chicken squad. And I was there. What I had to do was wait until after practice to go one on one with their top O lineman and shoulder pads. And I ain't have nothing. 
So what I did, I gave them that work. <laughs> I gave them that work. I gave them everything that they didn't want. <laughs> That's it. They looked at me. They kept overlooking me every single day. I took 16 snaps to 20 snaps, one-on-ones, every single day, illegally in Canada. <laughs> but, so, and then my chance came. They finally gave me an opportunity because I was, <clears throat> I was just beating everybody that they threw in front of me. Period, I was beating everybody that they threw in front of me. And then they gave me my opportunity. And in that opportunity, I played for one game with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And in that one game, I had my first official sight as a professional football player, but then it got taken away. So it didn't count. But that didn't discourage me. So next week, they cut me. I ain't have nothing. I ain't have no money in my pocket. I have nothing but my wife. And she was there supporting me throughout everything. And I ain't have it, but she had it. And she didn't have it, I made, I made sure that I was going to find a way to go get it. So I set out that whole year, 2015 as well, and 16. And then 2000, 2017 came, came back to Edmonton Eskimos. Played, well I didn't play. Actually I played in this preseason game and then they cut me right after the first preseason game. <laughs> Here goes another one. There's another cut. Man, what am I gonna do now? I'm looking around, I'm looking to the sky. I'm dropping down on my knees, praying. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Get up, dust that shoulder off, dust that dirt off. I got a dream to go catch. So that's what I went to go do. And after that, I saw all I did was work out, send out my film, me and my agent, we worked our butts off. And the agent that I had, shout out to my man Matt, he ain't here tonight, but he worked his butt off for me. In 2017, I had my first shot to get to the NFL. And just because you don't have nothing, you grow up in a single parent home, mother or father, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is believe in yourself. And that alone will take you far, further than what you really know. Trying to wrap it up. I don't want to waste our time. Uh, but like I said, my road was not easy. It was a long one. It was a curvy one. It was a steep one. <laughs> it was a rocky one. <laughs> I ran into potholes so many times. I can't count them on my fingers on my toes. But. One thing that I never did was give up on myself because I didn't care if you didn't believe in me. I didn't care if the critics didn't believe in me. I was gonna prove you wrong. And that's what I love to do. I love to prove people wrong. And my wife can tell you that, hands down. I, <laughs> I argue I argue and down, argue up and down that I'm right. <laughs> but sometimes I ain't right. <laughs> it gets me in trouble. <laughs> but, you know, like I was saying, <laughs> boy, boy, boy. Just clap it up for Daniel. Clap it up for Daniel. Clap it up for Daniel. Hey, Daniel. We, we have a bet. All right, man. So. Real story, real brother. Yeah. What you're talking about is real struggle, real life. We're really enjoying the struggle, and you're you're inspiration to us. And that's a, it's a night of inspiration, and that's why you're here. So you, 
you're sharing that from your heart, you know, the bottom, your wife, family, that's, that's what we want to recognize. And so tonight, with your story of validation, we have what we call a positive, a positive spark award. And what that means is for people that truly dig down deep and have what we call intentionality. Like you had intentionality, like no matter what, there's nothing going to stop you. And you had to learn method. Because you can have all the intentionality you want. If you don't know how to do it, if you don't know what those skills are, you still won't make it. So you learn how to do method and intentionality, and you're a successful young man right now in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So we love you for that. For that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To Daniel Ross, this positive spark award number 80. Yeah. Presented to Daniel Ross. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely going on.